cooling up with the slap. So what exactly do those terminals that I made have to do with Amp Test Tuesday? First of all, I've been really busy working on them and I just wanted to show them off a little bit. Also the fact that I'm using stainless steel hardware and grade 8 hardware, soon to be offering nickel plated copper or something like that, very expensive. But right now, stainless and grade 8, I just want to confirm whether or not there's a problem with the resistance of the bolts. I've been using those bolts in my rides for years and years and years with no problem at all. Even with three feet of stainless all thread, there's still 0.00, .00 ohms of resistance. So I don't really see a problem. There is better out there. You know, you could go all the way to silver. That's the greatest because, you know, silver is the best conductor. Then, of course, you got copper, which is really soft, but also expensive. But for these terminals, what I got here, I just want to prove whether or not it makes any difference at all. And I don't really think it does. But let's do an amp test Tuesday and find out. We'll test this Rockford Fosgate 600.2 amplifier with wires running straight from the amp straight to the SMD81 amp dyno and then we'll put a terminal in between and see exactly if there's any difference at all. The test wire and the normal wire are about the same length within a couple inches. After I get done cutting it and putting the ring terminals on it'll be about the same. Nothing that should affect this test at all. Stainless, grade eight, and soon to be some other more expensive materials. Nah, I didn't really bother to solder them or anything. I just crimped them properly. Just enough to get the job done for right now. As you can see, the Rockford amp is wired straight into the 81 right here. No terminal. All right, straight wire, no terminals. Two of each. Two ohms. That's putting one ohm across each channel since I am bridging. Second test, back to back. All right, let's jump over to non-certified. All right, time to do another one. And we'll do three dyno runs at Dynamic RMS. All right, three Dynamic runs, Dynamic RMS.
All right, we'll do a couple more of those just to be sure. Of course, doing this makes the amp warm up and the numbers could change a little, but I want to do three just to see exactly what's going on. Get a nice little average. And one more. All right, fair enough. Let's move over to the terminal. Let's hook the terminal up. See what happens. Good goddamn numbers from a 600 watt amp. But let's put a terminal in the mix with stainless steel hardware. Let's see if it makes any difference in the amount of power that's able to be passed through it. I don't think it will. We'll do two runs of each. Two ohm load across those channels should bring one ohm bridged. Do another back to back test. Certified, reset. All right, two more tests in uncertified mode. One more back to back. And two more tests in dynamic RMS mode. Results with your own two eyes. Battery on my phone's getting ready to die, so what I'm gonna do while it's charging. We're gonna switch over and use some grade eight bolts right here. A little bit cheaper than the stainless. Yellow, not quite gold, but yellowish. Let's see if that makes any difference. I didn't see much of any difference at all using these, so that's a good sign. Let's switch them on over to the other ones. like that grade eight a little bit cheaper than the stainless has a yellow look to it although it doesn't really mean nothing so 800 watts through the grade eights perfect 